Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, now caffeine free. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about commonly used TCP and UDP ports. We're going to talk about what's in section 1.2 of our Network Plus exam, that is the N10-004 exam, where we need to identify commonly used TCP and UDP default ports. And we're going to go through all of these different TCP ports and all of these different UDP ports. This is a module on memorization. Now, fortunately, we already know all these protocols because, of course, you watched our previous module where we talked about all of these protocols. So Hopefully, it'll be very easy now just to add port numbers onto the end of these things. It'll be very easy. And if, if you work with these day to day, what you'll find is you probably already know a number of these port numbers already. Now, before we talk about what application goes with what port, let's talk about this idea of TCP ports and UDP ports and what they are. And when we look at protocols, uh, IP version 4 uses these TCP and UDP ports a lot. Now, these are the things you have to have to be able to communicate with IP version 4, whether you're using UDP or whether you're using TCP. It's one or the other, by the way. If you're running an IP packet, it's either going to have UDP in it or it's going to have TCP. It's not going to have both. You have to choose one of those. Now, the packet has to have a server IP address. And it has to have an application port number for the server. We also need, of course, our client machine needs an IP address. And it needs to send information out via a port number. So those are the four pieces that we need to be able to have a successful communication via IP version 4 and via TCP or UDP. Now, we're also here this term called non-ephemeral ports. These are port numbers that are permanent. Ephemeral ports are temporary. That's what ephemeral means. This is usually port numbers that are on a server or a service. We're going to learn in this module that HTTP for web servers uses TCP port 80. It's always going to use port 80 to be able to communicate on that particular server. So we're going to say that that port is non-ephemeral. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to change. It's always going to be port 80 when we connect to it. That's a little different than port numbers that are usually used on our client workstations when we're talking to that web server. On our client machines, we're very much using ephemeral ports. They're ports that are temporarily created so that we can talk to that web server. Once we're finished with that web server communication, we shut down that communication, and we don't use that port number again, at least not until we may cycle all the way back through again. Now, this is usually determined in real time, and it's usually done by our client workstation. Some client workstations will use these ports in order. Some will randomly pick a port. It just depends on the type of IP stack you have on your machine. But when you hear the terms non-ephemeral and ephemeral, just keep in mind those are ports that are permanent and ports that are used temporarily. Now let's talk about what a port number actually is. Now a TCP port number or a UDP port number is simply any number between 0 and 65535. Port number 0 usually isn't used very often. It's used only in very rare circumstances, but it is a legal port number. The idea is that these port numbers are used to, to use services or to be able to communicate to a service on another machine. Now, most servers, like web servers, will use these non-ephemeral port numbers or permanent port numbers. But that's not always the case. They aren't always these number 80 is always a web server. It's just a number. We're just choosing a number. It just happens to be one that most devices expect to have on a web server. If we're connecting to Google, we just expect that Google's going to be using port 80. It's just a number we've all come up with and we've agreed on. If you wanted to put your web server on port 79, you could do that. You'd have to tell people it's on port 79 because otherwise your browser wouldn't understand that. Your browser is expecting your web server to be on port 80. But just keep in mind that it's just a number. It's just one we've all come up with and then we all agree with. But it doesn't have to be that. You can make it anything you'd like. Port numbers are designed to be for communication. Just because you put your web server on port 79 doesn't make it any more secure. It's very, very simple for me to use some programs to go out onto the internet and ask your server what port numbers are available. And it will tell me that port 79 is available because that's the only way that port 79 is going to work is if it advertises itself if somebody asks. So this is not for security. Port numbers are not a security tool. They're just used to allow communication. Service port numbers, as we mentioned, need to be well known. And that's what this module is about. Certain applications have well known port numbers. Port 80 is well known. 
to be on web servers. Port 443 is the well-known TCP port for encrypted ports on that web server using HTTPS protocol. And as we go through this module, you'll see that these numbers are extremely well known and you're going to run to, into them over and over again in your just normal job, the normal things that you do with networking. It's important to keep in mind that the TCP port numbers are not the same as UDP port numbers. You can, on a single server, have a TCP port 80 in use and a UDP port 80 in use. They are completely separated in how they work. So those numbers between 0 and 65535, I can have that range for TCP. There is a completely unique and separate range for UDP, and they can all be in use all at once if you want them to be. It's very common to see things like port 53 TCP and port 53 UDP be open at the same time on a server that's providing DNS services. So don't be thrown by that. It just happens to be that they are very separate in how they work and just keep them separated in your mind. Here's a graphical description of a computer that's talking to a web server. So this web server happens to have some ports that are in use by services on that server. One is a UDP port 53. And you'll notice as I write these, you're going to see the type of protocol, TCP or UDP, a slash, and then the protocol that's in use. It's a very common way to write those out in the industry. So UDP port 53, it's running DNS on this server. So that, that is open. There's a TCP port 80 that's open on this server. There's also TCP port 443 open on this web server. So there's a few services available. What I'm going to do on my computer is bring up a browser screen, and I want to connect to that web server. I type in the name or the IP address of that web server and hit Enter. My client decides that the TCP port that I should be using to communicate to that server is TCP port 1331. This is an a, a ephemeral port. It's one that is temporary. And so it's one that my client just used for the purposes of this communication. And it, my machine says, let's go out to that IP address on TCP port 80 and communicate back and forth. And when that machine, this web server, receives that packet, it knows to communicate back with me. It's going to use my IP address and this TCP port number of 1331 to communicate back and forth. And so for the duration of this communication, I'm using those two port numbers with those two IP addresses to complete the circuit so that I can communicate back and forth. Once that session is over, my machine might choose a completely different port number to communicate back to that web server if I need to. And the process just happens again and again and again. OK, are you ready for the memorization part? Here we go. Let's start with these TCP ports. I've got a big list to go through. The first one is FTP. That stands for File Transfer Protocol. It uses two ports. It uses TCP port 20 for data and TCP port 21 for the control information going back and forth. Another port number is TCP port 22. That's used by something called SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. So if you're connecting to a remote device via a console and you're typing in commands, you're often using SSH to do that. Another program to connect to remote consoles, this one is not encrypted. SSH is normally an encrypted conversation. Telnet is not encrypted. It uses TCP port 23. SMTP is seen quite often. This is the way that our mail systems transfer mail from site to site, from location to location. It's called Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it uses TCP port 25. TCP port 53 is used for DNS, Domain Name Services. And this TCP port is used for zone transfers. So DNS normally uses UDP when we're simply querying things. But if you're ever in a situation where you're transferring the entire zone of information, you'll see that it is using TCP port 53 to make that happen. HTTP, a protocol that we use quite often for our web browsers, is Hypertext Tra Transfer Protocol. It uses TCP port 80. POP3 is Post Office Protocol version 3. That's used often by our mail clients to retrieve mail from our mail servers. It uses TCP port 110. And IMAP4 is a protocol that's used. It's called Internet Message Access Protocol version 4. That's a big name. That uses TCP port 143. And finally, we have HTTPS, which is the secure part of HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And you'll always see that over TCP port 443. So look at those TCP ports. Those are the ones that are most important to memorize for your Network Plus exam. And we'll probably have some questions on those at the end of this video.
Let's step through some UDP ports. There are not as many UDP ports to memorize for the Network Plus exam. But again, this is just a sampling of the port numbers that you'll see out there in the wild. DNS stands for Domain Name Services. We mentioned earlier that DNS can be used for doing zone transfers via TCP. The UDP protocol is what we most often see on a network because that's where people are actually doing the queries. So when you query for yahoo.com, you query for google.com, there is a UDP port 53 packet that goes out with that do domain name service query inside of it. You'll also see UDP port 67 used quite a bit as machines are turned on and connect to the network. They do a boot P or a DHCP request and conversation out to a DHCP server. And that's using that UDP port 67 to make that happen to the server. Uh, that stands for Bootstrap Protocol and Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Those are the same protocols, sort of an older name and then an updated version. Boot P is what we called it in the past, and DHCP is the newer version. TFTP stands for Trivial File Transfer Protocol. That uses UDP port 69. NTP is a network time protocol. This is used by our client machines to be able to update the times and keep synchronized around the world. And that uses UDP port 123. It's good for time. And SNMP is Simple Network Management Protocol. If you are querying network devices to obtain information about their uptime, total amount of throughput, it is a management protocol. And it uses UDP port 161. Well, how well did we do? Do you remember some of those? Let's, let's go through a few of those commonly used TCP and UDP ports. What port is commonly used for SMTP? You can see you're going to need to memorize quite a few of these if you're going to remember that that's Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it's using TCP port 25. Let's do another. What port is commonly used for DHCP? DHCP, of course, is our Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. You remember, is it a TCP port? Is it a UDP port? If you recall, it's a UDP port running over port number 67. And last question, what ports are commonly used for FTP? Oh, I'm saying ports here. So if you remember, there were two different ports for our file transfer protocol. They were TCP ports, and they were TCP port 20 for data and TCP port 21 for the control communication. We've now gone through all the ports you need to memorize for your Network Plus certification out of Section 1.2. And now we have this list that we can choose from to keep in mind when we go and sit for that exam. It may ask you what some of those ports are. Fortunately, every single one of those is useful to know just for normal purposes when you start working on networks. So it's a very good example of things that are very useful that you will always end up using in the real world. For many more Network Plus videos, to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.